On behalf of Department of Zoology and Research Center, I welcome the guest speaker, Dr. Shantanu Kundu, and other participants for this session on training program on DNA barcoding. I now request Dr. APA Rani, Associate Professor, Department of Zoology, Lady Dog College, to introduce the guest speaker. Thank you, Mother Mita, for the invitation. I take it as a pleasure to introduce our eminent speaker who is uh, going to enlighten each one of us about the molecular taxonomy. He is Dr. Shantana Kundu from Senior as Research Associate from uh, Center for DNA Taxonomy, CDT, Molecular Systematic Division, Zoological Survey of India, Kolkata. And he is currently associated with CACR pool scientist in the Center for DNA Taxonomy. Uh, and uh, he has a very good interest, research interest in eliminating the uh, society with the knowledge on the micro and macro biodiversity of organisms so that we could save them from our living planet. And there, he is also interested in understanding the species discovery, interaction, the dynamics that uh, occurs at the genomic level between these organisms and how they have evolved through evolution in time and space. And he has completed his doctoral degree in biotechnology from Assam Central University in 2014. And he has been awarded prestigious postdoctoral fellowship from three different uh, national bodies like uh, Department of Biotechnology, Department of Science and Technology, Council of CSAR. And he has also received Indian Science Congress Association Award, Government of India. And he has contributed to about 66 high quality research articles in various peer reviewed journals. And he has also contributed about four books, two book chapters, and three proceedings articles. And to uh, correlate with the topic that we have today, he has discovered one species of mammal, four species of spider, and he has described the new record of three spider species and two turtle species of India. And he has uh, deposited more than 3,000 DNA sequences generated from various studies that he has done in global database GenBank. And he's also very good at delivering hands-on training and classroom lectures in several national, international seminars and conferences. And he's also a member of IUCN by SSE Tortoise and Freshwater Turtle Specialist Group who uh, work for conservation of tortoises. And he is also a life member of several uh, scientific bodies such as Society of Biological Chemists India, the Social Environmental Biological Association, as well as Indian Society of Remote Sensing. And he is also a member of DNA Society of India, Kolkata. Presently, he is working in the editorial board of uh, Mitochondrial journal, uh, DNA Journal of Taylor and Francis. So from his uh, concise resume, we could find that he is an able person and the eminent person to enlighten us for today's session. I welcome you, sir, once again and hand over the session to you. Thank you, sir. So... Very good morning to all of you. And uh, I'm thankful to the patron and principal, Dr. Uh, Christian Singh, madam, and the chairperson on head of the Department of Geology Department of Lady Dog College, uh, Dr. Priyadarsini Rajendran, madam, for inviting me uh, to deliver this uh, lecture on DNA barcoding and uh, on this virtual meeting. So. Uh, my topic is uh, that DNA barcoding of animal, uh, Indian animal life initiative and future perspective. So um, uh, I think the participants are from geology department and uh, they are both from, means you people are both uh, from UG and PG courses or only the PG courses. Um, there are a few UG students, sir, mostly postgraduates, um, postdoctoral fellows, as well as research scholars. Sir. Okay, okay. So um, I don't know okay, whether uh, they are involved in that biodiversity related research or not. Actually, people are, while studying the geology, most of the people are very much interested on that, uh, like in biomedical or medical type of research. Uh, and very few of them are um, entered in that biodiversity related study. Uh, but uh, while we have 
uh, noticed uh, in several uh, social medias or in any public news that uh, many large large charismatic species are becoming threatened in the wild and then we just started to enter in that biodiversity research and uh, that time we have already missed or already lost so many small creatures that uh, is present that were present in and around of us so this is uh, my first slide and uh, so uh, in the uh, second slide you can see that biodiversity strategy for uh, 2030 uh, so both uh, cbd and uh, uh, the european commission has decided to uh, make a global framework for that uh, in biodiversity research, research to uh, like to achieve the Niagara protocol on access benefit sharing and the IG biodiversity targets. So what is the IG biodiversity targets? IT biodiversity targets is the main two points is there. Like in even below, you can see that review and progress of the implementation of on conventions and strategic plan for biodiversity. And the most important thing is the digital sequence information on genetic resources. So uh, without that uh, genetic resource means uh, digital sequence information or DNA sequences, sometimes it gets difficult to uh, like identify or uh, check the diversity and what is the uh, like uh, if the species is threatened and uh, how uh, it uh, may be used for conservation genetic research. So this type of uh, doing some uh, better conservation strategy for long term monitoring so sometimes that dna sequences will really help so you can see the indian biodiversity at a glance uh, this has three major uh, limbs that is indo malaya eurasian and afrotropical and you can see uh, that from sea level to tropical subtropical and temperate to alpine so you can see different types of eco zones uh, are present in India and it harbors a large biodiversity in our nation. So our nation also having that uh, 102 national parks, 520 century, 18 by bio reserve and six world heritage sites. So it is very much important in terms of biodiversity research. Next, so like this is the paper came on nature uh, in 2000, that is the biodiversity hotspot for conservation priorities and there are uh, several biodiversity hotspots are present in the world and in, in India, there are having four biodiversity hotspots, one is Eastern Himalaya, one is the Indo Burma. It is the uh, like uh, part of Northeast India and uh, the Myanmar, and uh, the Western Ghats and Sri Lanka is uh, conjointly and uh, the Sundaland. Sundaland means the, uh, it is a, a, just uh, a small portion of Nicobar Island is uh, in, included in this biodiversity hotspots. So now. Uh, while I focusing that uh, Western Ghats and I have uh, just two picture I have merged into the one, you can see that your college, Lady Doy College is over here. Can you see that red pin? Okay. So uh, in the left side, you can see that uh, Northern Western Ghats, Central, this is the Western Ghat map. Uh, and this is our your lady dog college and you can see the uh, biodiversity uh, region is very close to you people so you have a lot of scope uh, to uh, generate the dna barcode data to uh, collect the specimen from the wild uh, to monitor the status of the uh, many biodiversity elements uh, present in the western Ghats region
So in Western Ghats region, there are plant species. This type uh, means around 4,780 uh, plant species. Among them, this is the a highly endemic species. And again, the vertebrate species 1073, and that which is the 1.3% uh, of endemism of total global, if you compare with that global uh, vertebrates. Now, this is the faunal uh, diversity of India. As of now, the world is consists of that 15,66,353 species and India is recorded the 6.45% of the world. So, which is around uh, more than 1 lakh. Now, uh, this is in plus is very uh, like uh, yeah so plus the uh, biology they, they are uh, published on paper that uh, around 8.7 million uh, plus eukaryotic species are uh, estimated in the earth but very few of them are really not known to the scientist or researcher so now what is the molecular taxonomy? So you can see there are live domain from species. This is the very basic level to genus, family, order, and this is the classification. And if uh, some, uh, this is the actually debate of uh, two different taxonomies or scientists, uh, like uh, if somebody is telling uh, based on the character, if we, if we, uh, I'm giving you one example. If you identify one fish species, so uh, for to identify them, we have to check uh, a various uh, morphological characters like uh, the total length, the head length, body length, body depth, or sometimes the skeletal structure, or uh, like uh, how many fins are there. So there are several. Um, means uh, morphological characters we have to look and we have to compare to the morphological characters and that time some people who are uh, really uh, doing some taxonomy uh, the classical taxonomy from long back they are uh, sometimes little bit, bit rigid on their own concept or their own uh, like belief uh, so, uh, no, uh, we, we are uh, just uh, thinking this is the, this species, but uh, they sometimes ignore uh, the, uh, the other uh, means concept. So, and that time, uh, like uh, while comparing the multiple uh, like characters and if we co uh, compare the individuals with a single character that is my earlier speak, uh, speaker is uh, like I, I have heard a, uh, her talk and he, uh, she has really delivered a good lecture on the basics of the molecular concept. There is again uh, four letters uh, like A, T, G, and C, the four nucleotides. And if we uh, like sequence that uh, any uh, miss or unidentified specimen, you, you just make one sequence uh, then you can uh, really compare uh, that this is the uh, true species or this become a new or this become a, another one so it it, it will uh, be very easy to compare uh, that time uh, while we can a uh, little bit to reduce the challenges uh, doing some uh, classical taxonomic work and uh, another interesting thing if uh, you just uh, collect one uh, the um, uh, neonate individual from riverine system of freshwater fishes uh, maybe not the adult so uh, it had not acquired that uh, the morphological character yet that time so this can also be a help uh, in, if you uh, sequence uh, your DNA sequence uh, can help you to identify uh, in those specimens. So now uh, this is the DNA barcoding. So we all know the DNA barcoding is established by Paul DNA Hubbard uh, in 2003. 
but the real scenario is a little bit different. <laughs> I will show you, means uh, discuss you. Like in, uh, you can see that Bharma and Singh, our own Indian scientist from CCMB Hyderabad, they have actually uh, designed one primer uh, that is the MCB uh, CDB for cytochrome B gene. And they have tested it for wildlife forensic science. Means a short uh, fragment of around 450 base pair, a short segment of the cytochrome B gene can be used for species identification. So, uh, but uh, they got the patent for that novel primer, but uh, that time the uh, thing is that uh, they, uh, the technology or the tool is not means well established or well experimented in wide group of taxa. So that Canadian group, they have uh, like uh, designed uh, another one set of uh, primer pair and uh, just uh, choose the another segment of uh, cytochrome C uh, oxidase subunit 1 gene that is the uh, it is the from 5 prime end L like the total uh, cytochrome C is the around 1500 base pair but the 500 prime end they have choose the portion around 650 base pair and they have designated this is the barcode region and uh, this barcode region maybe you can apply for a wide group of taxa from lower invertebrates to higher vertebrates. So now madam has uh, uh, already uh, show you these uh, slides, so I can skip this. So this is the mitochondrial DNA, I will uh, explain you briefly. This is a uh, circular uh, genome, mitochondrial DNA. Uh, which is uh, means composing of uh, 13 protein coding gene, 22 tRNAs, and uh, two uh, ribosomal RNA. One is the large uh, and small, and one is the uh, D loop, like it is the control region. Okay. So now the, this is the nuclear DNA and mitochondrial DNA differences. Why uh, we are using that mitochondrial DNA for uh, DNA barcoding region, uh, like it has maternally inheritance and lack of introns, no recombination, circular. So uh, this type of various uh, structural uh, benefits is there uh, to choose uh, like we can choose that mitochondrial DNA as a robust uh, biomarker. So now this is the uh, international initiatives devoted by development of DNA barcoding eyeball project started at uh, 2009 they, uh, from like you can see the central regional and development India has recognized as the regional uh, center. And uh, there are several other uh, initiative has been already uh, like taken places like a fishbowl uh, and uh, um, uh, that CCBD bio bowl system. This is all the uh, global uh, networking program. So people are from different uh, biogeographic regions. They have generated the sequences. They have collected the specimens, and they have analyzed, uh, submitted into the bold uh, database. Uh, from there, they have analyzed and published uh, their data, and to uh, like uh, illuminate uh, the what is the diversification, what is the present diversity, and uh, there are several others uh, like. Uh, in terms of biodiversity research. So my interest in this all uh, global networking program, um, I have grown my interest in and that cold code. Uh, so what is cold code? Uh, like uh, it, it is uh, dealing with that uh, herpetofauna specifically. So during my uh, PhD tenure, I have uh, choose one really interesting animal from wild that is the turtle and tortoises, freshwater. It is the oldest uh, living animal still existing in the planet Earth. Uh, like, and it has more uh, time uh, they can survive. 
So this is the basic, very uh, basic procedure of DNA barcoding from sample collection. You can select the materials, then extract the DNA, uh, then PCR, uh, and then sequencing of the DNA and edit the data and generate the DNA barcode. But uh, uh, as I am telling you, uh, to all my beloved students who are attending this uh, like workshop or uh, virtual training. Uh, so that DNA barcoding techniques and tools is really a not a very tough job. It is a very easy tech tools and techniques and you can anyone can enter into that particular area. Uh, but before that, you have to establish a good knowledge on a little bit on biodiversity and uh, you have to raise uh, some biological questions. Uh, so why you want to do the DNA barcoding, why you want to generate the DNA barcoding data and uh, what you want to uh, going to be answered or how you interrupt your uh, DNA sequences into the uh, uh, morphological or classical taxonomy and how you answer the biology or resolve the biological questions. So the <clears throat> selection of uh, materials or collection, it is a, again, is not a very tough job, but you have to, uh, means uh, sometimes you have to much precise that uh, there should be not contamination. Uh, you have to always wearing the gloves and uh, the scissors and forceps so wh while uh, like uh, uh, you I so means extract the tissue sample um, like it should not be contaminated by other microorganisms and uh, during the PCR uh, it is also a very means easy techniques but the thing is that um, most of the groups if you are uh, targeting on uh, any particular groups where the primer is not available for that particular group so you have to design the primer this is one of uh, critical steps and uh, but uh, during uh, after that you have to uh, get the like amplified uh, product and uh, subsequently you have uh, do the Sanger sequence uh, to get the uh, DNA barcode sequences particularly. But uh, most critical thing is uh, you have to, uh, every time you have to be careful while you generate uh, the sequences and when you receive the chromatogram file uh, uh, from your own uh, in-house uh, means like systems or if you uh, like uh, outsource uh, to do sequencing uh, from any company so they have provided you some FASTA file and uh, some chromatogram file uh, this chromatogram file looks like that okay so uh, uh, like uh, madam uh, the my earlier um, uh, speaker has told you one interesting thing that is the norms the uh, nuclear mitochondrial pseudogenes and this is the heteroplasmy so during the screening uh, of that particular uh, means uh, chromatogram file you have to be careful to read each peak so if uh, there is some time of this type of peaks uh, like uh, the two peaks are merged uh, and uh, you have to check the uh, some values over there uh, whether you can see, select uh, the peak or not and so this will give you a better result uh, uh, if you are not confused um, so uh, this is the most critical part um, while 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 starting uh, the first stage of dna barcoding uh, you, if you want to start so after that, uh, you have to, uh, and one more thing uh, that is you have to sequence uh, like uh, bidirectional always 
Uh, so there are two sets of primer that is forward primer and reverse primer. So uh, in each case, you can uh, like sequence both the um, direction sequencing. Then you can compare. So that time uh, it, it will be more chance to uh, like uh, you can remove the error uh, from your particular sequence data. So after that uh, means uh, when you uh, get ready the consensus sequences uh, by uh, align that uh, forward uh, um, sequences and the reverse complementary of the reverse sequences. So you can uh, like compare to the uh, global blast or local blast uh, to the uh, gene bank uh, database. Uh, or you can check the uh, your protein sequences array uh, by warp finder so there i think uh, your madam will teach you uh, while explaining that uh, like uh, hands on uh, period so um, it will be uh, but uh, again one more important thing uh, people what people are doing uh, like uh, some people are uh, generated the DNA barcode, DNA barcode sequences, and they have uh, uh, compared their blast in that global databases. So uh, sometimes uh, they got uh, that uh, the DNA barcode sequences, which are already available in the global database, it showing the 98% uh, similarities. So, but uh, they are enough confidence uh, that our uh, morphological species is this. And uh, so it may be 100% similarity with that uh, global sequences. So they have sometimes manipulate the sequences and uh, again, some it means they're, they're very much biased to the uh, like uh, available uh, sequences in the global database uh, published by any big group or uh, renowned scientist but uh, don't uh, i as per my uh, idea we have means it is not a, a exact way uh, maybe the species identification is right but uh, maybe there are the cryptic diversity maybe there are some recently diverged uh, diversification is going on so there are several effect in in that uh, organism uh, that can be uh, you can see uh, by checking the nucleotide sequences and they are uh, like uh, evolutionary pattern or uh, some genetic divergence uh, this type of uh, or if you uh, like uh, go for that uh, if you going to be biased then you you may miss uh, various uh, other queries also so the next is uh, that sequence analysis it is the overview uh, like uh, nucleotide sequences and protein sequences, as I always tell you, uh, already tell you these things. So I will quickly. So this is the some basic softwares uh, used for uh, DNA barcoding analysis for sequence quality control check, chromas, DNA baser, sequence scanner, BioDIT. You can use submitting sequences uh, in global databases, uh, sequin bank it bold you can use for sequence analysis mega dumbe vision rexml pop beast beauty you can use uh, like sequence quality control check sequence manipulation source blast p blast n warp finder sequence analysis bold system that is the abgd gmic bptp and ITOL. these all are the multiple species delimitation methods i will tell you later on and the gene arrangements cracks phylobes and g blocks uh, so this is the uh, like uh, some kind of uh, the little bit uh, high level of uh, analysis. So uh, after uh, means uh, if you have uh, the DNA barcode sequences in your hand and now you uh, like you have 10 sequences and you don't know how many species is there. Uh, so how you uh, like what approach uh, you have to be uh, 
so the first criteria is to reciprocal monophyly if you uh, like build a phylogeny phylogeny uh, by using your that 10 sequences which you have generated uh, and that 10 sequences uh, if uh, the phylogeny give you the five clad clades and each clades has two uh, particular sequences so we can say that it, and there's two two uh, each clade and the two sequences is clustered together so it will show you the reciprocal monophyly and maybe we can uh, like uh, tell you that uh, yeah it it it's a five uh, group of species so you can see uh, these all are uh, the groups species uh, group and they can uh, means uh, like uh they have uh, clustered together and uh, uh, build a monophyletic uh, clustering in this particular phylogeny so this is the one criteria the next criteria is the barcode gap so this is again uh, a very interesting uh, like uh, to check the barcode gap what is the criteria that is the lowest interspecies divergence and highest interspecies intraspecies divergence so inter means from one species to another from intra means within the species okay so now you can see the graph so this is the intra okay i will show you once again this is the intra species this is the inter species so what happened sometimes if we check this is the barcode gap so uh, see this is the lowest value and this is the highest value these two bar okay one and two and while exceed that lowest inter species so we can like treat as a valid species sometimes it is it is the another species so if it is the uh, below the highest in intra then it is the same species so this type of um, means you have to check uh, uh, these things with your genetic distances uh, you can like uh, means uh, estimate uh, by several other parameters are there uh, like you have to choose some model select some model selection and uh, go for some analysis this will give you uh, some genetic distances and based on the genetic distances you can uh, calculate the lowest and highest inter or interspecies divergence so this is another one uh, character based attributes uh, so uh, means uh, several times what happened that in particular uh, position uh, nucleotide position the uh, similarity of uh, nucleotides uh, gives you a signal that uh, like it is a group of species um, or it is a another group of species so this is another character based so now what is the challenges in biodiversity genomics so we are doing some dna data uh, we have some morphological specimens uh, but uh, sometimes uh, due to the hybridization madam has already tell you that hybridization some environmental trace some species and like there are several types of species and sympatric, allopatric, parapatric. Uh, so sometimes you cannot uh, means like uh, identify that uh, what is that particular identity of that particular species. So uh, or maybe the cryptic cryptic one. So. Uh, and there are again uh, there are various type of species concept available in uh, like in geological science and uh, um, moreover we are not uh, like uh, means combine 
the multiple six, uh, things like uh, if somebody is doing uh, like real biodiversity research so they will do uh, the molecular study also some ecological study uh, some morphological study and some uh, population genetics level study so if you do the uh, uh, the combined way uh, that time uh, it, it will give you uh, a very concrete and good result otherwise if you just pick up one particular segment then it, that may be um, some dilemmas you can feel so uh, now uh, what is the species see uh, the species existed in database and not in wild this is uh, again another interesting thing like uh, some people are uh, doing the DNA barcoding study without uh, means uh, having the good knowledge on the uh, classical taxonomy. So they have generated the DNA barcode data and uh, they have uh, like uh, means uh, they have not incorporated any name like SP and uh, uh, like genus and sp they have named it and they have uh, submitted in the global databases and uh, that time uh, maybe the paper is published in the, uh, by the scientific communities but uh, the we don't know whether the species is really existed or not so now uh, you can see another one so this is oh we got maybe this is due to so uh, some people are doing that uh, species see one make one phylogeny and species four and species five so um, he was surprised that uh, oh, we got two new species or closely related species to species sp3 or cryptic species or species complex so th this may not be due to the misidentification or synonymy or lack of um, authentication in sequence in databases so uh, no still uh, if we go to the reverse taxonomy then we can see no this is not uh, actually the cryptic species that is the three valid species so that time what uh, when we uh, like uh, face this type of problems uh, then <coughs> We can integrate barcoding, that is taxonomist bar barcoders uh, who are really expertise in um, classical taxonomy and as well as the molecular phylogenetics and uh, the barcoding of museum specimen, prehistorical collection, as well as type N. This is again the uh, very important thing, like uh, to compare the uh, molecular information or morphological data with the type specimen uh, like some holotype, paratype or syntype. Uh, it means like uh, from where the species was uh, described uh, or uh, some analysis has been already done. So uh, this is uh, a very interesting paper. This is the cryptic diversity window for diversity and conservation. Maybe if you uh, anybody is interested uh, to more on that uh, subject, uh, you can go through this paper. And uh, the thing is, uh, while uh, these type of challenges, uh, so there is a multi-gene approach we can use. Um, with that uh, cytochrome C gene, we can contaminate it, uh, some nuclear genes also, some mitochondrial genes also, and uh, to check the cryptic diversity and uh, we can adopt the species delimitation method. So this is the species delimitation method, uh, like bean, ABGD, ABGD means in barcode index number, you can directly uh, estimate through bold uh, databases, that is the automated uh, uh, DNA barcode gap, and uh, BPTP. It is a like a BPTP and GMYC. Uh, this is the coalescent-based method, and this is the distance-based method. So this is a kind of bioinformatics based uh, study. Uh, so you have to check uh, to the OTUs. Here it is the OTUs. And I, I will tell you the motu. 
uh, moto means uh, this is the molecular operational taxonomic unit so what is the motu motu is uh, the you can estimate the diversity below species level okay i don't believe the uh, concept of subspecies um if anybody is telling there is a subspecies uh, so i am telling you no this is not a subspecies rather this is a motu or this is a uh, like uh, some different population of the particular species so we can estimate the motu by using this uh, like multiple species delimitation method now we can see also the population uh, structure if we uh, like uh, from four different area we can if we uh, extract the dna and if we uh, like generate the dna barcode data we do the analysis and you can see the meta population there are uh, four different uh, uh, means population are over there in different biogeographic zones uh, so uh, this will how how this uh, population genetics is uh, main uh, useful in like agriculture uh, sciences uh, if you if you uh, like uh, choose any um, uh, agriculture important pest and vector species and uh, the uh, you have to manage that pest and vector species but uh, the approach is maybe the different uh, means uh, they have acquired the, some genetic signatures over the over the period of time and so uh, to uh, mitigate this problem uh, and uh, for adoptive uh, adopt some uh, real conservation strategy and uh, so uh, you have to uh, first uh, figure out that uh, what is the population is there uh, what uh, is the genetic structure of that particular population and uh, what is the uh, means effect uh, plan should be adopted for that uh, uh, to for uh, control of uh, different uh, vectors uh, and uh, some disease transmissions um, uh, organisms also, also. So now this is the application of DNA barcoding in taxonomic research. This is the identify of species in any life stages, species new to science, species new to biogeographic area, cryptic species detection, species complex. Beyond that, detection of unstructured sample. I will tell you that uh, already told you that um, from any life stages from unstructured meat uh, from any commercialized specimen from any wildlife scissor materials uh, the dna can really help you to identify wildlife crime control trade route quarantine regulation in the species detection and what's it what uh, in uh, 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 we have also performed one study in uh, the crab species recently you might have seen you might have heard that uh, some uh, in eastern coast uh, of west bengal that is digha one uh, means renowned uh, places is there at, uh, and during this winter several visitors has visited and enjoying their seafood so some people are uh, delivering that uh, some poisonous crab and uh, some people uh, got affected that stomach uh, pain badly so uh, we have also um, apart from similar one uh, study in the odisha coast and we have uh, uh, means like uh, generate the DNA barcode samples from some small restaurants or small uh, like uh, 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 means like people so who are uh, uh, means uh, uh, selling that uh, seafood in the beaches. So um, we have uh, identified that uh, what actually uh, they are serving uh, to the visitors. Uh, so this will be interesting this type of study. Uh, so my basic interest is uh, was in face water tunnel and tortoises. So this uh, I will uh, show you some share you my experiences. Uh, that is the uh, was the first large scale DNA barcoding assessment of face water tunnel and tortoises in biodiversity hotspot of India, northeast India. So the turtle and tortoises is the two uh, classification. I am telling you uh, why I am telling you. This will give you how you design your work 
you although this is the dna barcoding work but you have to side by side you have to accumulate this type of information to write your paper to uh, i mean uh, otherwise if you um, just uh, generate the dna barcode it will not uh, work uh, for in better way Mm, so uh, this is the two uh, classification is majorly grouped by two. Uh, there is periodes and cryptodes, uh, hidden neck and side neck turtles. This is the classification. We can see the uh, like the what is the relationship and how many means uh, the prehistoric uh, uh, information of that particular taxa like uh, when they evolve uh, what is the lifespan and how they evolve uh, or uh, there is some relation in the, the geography or uh, diversification of, of the uh, or with that uh, plate um, the geological time scale or uh, plate tectonics or not so there are uh, several uh, things you have to incorporate or you have to uh, accumulate uh, to uh, interpret your results so this is now the taxonomy uh, you have to go for the taxonomy also details uh, you can see this type of marks or this type of uh, like uh, skewed number you have to uh, and this is the some visible characters you have to check uh, now you have to check the um, uh, length, width, and the measurement. All these type of measurement you have to uh, do that. Uh, now the geography you can check. You, you, you have to check the uh, pattern, like where these uh, uh, means animal are distributed in the uh, world. And uh, now the uh, biodiversity hotspot and why I uh, I was uh, wondering and I was very much enthusiastic to do that study because you can see that uh, uh, more than 18 species, this is the global uh, like diversity of uh, face of turtle and tortoises uh, throughout the world and uh, this is the, you can see that 18, more than 18 number of species is in a red color. And what is the red color? It is only that this portion. So this is in the northeast Indian part. So uh, while uh, this particular position has uh, more than 18 species, uh, so I have choose uh, my study area uh, mostly in the North Eastern region uh, and uh, check the diversity of the uh, turtle and tortoises uh, over the time. So now you have to check the ecology, habit and habitat. So uh, what is the habitats is there, uh, how they mate and uh, uh, see, you can see there are really means uh, they are coexisting uh, with uh, the monitor lizard and uh, tortoises. So this all type of uh, information, it will give you a good uh, scenario uh, and good knowledge. And uh, you can see this is a scientist, the down scientist is Karthik Sankar from IC Bangalore. And uh, he has actually um, uh, like marking of uh, several sea turtles. Uh, there's olive ridley turtle in that uh, Odisha beaches. So this will help you a, a population uh, means genetic study. Now this is the taxonomy group of research uh, and research gap. So is the multi-domain actually, uh, the taxonomy and systematics, biogeography, biotic threats, phylogeny and evolution. We have to uh, means look uh, in different way. So DNA barcoding and my journey, what I have uh, done uh, during my this tenure. I used uh, like different uh, groups and uh, I have um, like uh, point out uh, some biological questions uh, means and uh, try to answer them uh, to incorporate the DNA barcoding. I will show you very few. Uh, okay. So this is my first thing, first uh, paper, which was published in Varsita DNA Barcodes Journal in like 2012. And uh, so what ha happened, I, I have seen that uh, there are uh, 
like this is the indo test indo group uh, all are present hello yes sir yes yeah so uh, can you uh, anybody uh, tell me that uh, what uh, what is the species can you can you uh, means anybody know what is the species like uh, in south india also one endemic tortoise is there it looks like the same this is the uh, Travang... sir it could it be medas mydas okay. not the species but genus uh, no it is the indo testudo oh, okay it is the indo testudo indo testudo travancorica so uh, in indo testudo uh, there are three species one is indo testudo travancorica this is endemic to western ghat and indo testudo elongata that is the uh, partly distributed you can see the distribution pattern uh, you see this is the indo testudo travancorica is restricted in western ghat and uh, that that is uh, this is the like uh, intertestudo elongata and one is intertestudo fosterni so this was believed to be uh, like restricted in indonesia but uh, while we uh, go for uh, morphological study we uh, just uh, collected some specimen from the northeastern part uh, specifically from the mizoram area actually the northeastern region is very much interesting because this is, they are sharing the biodiversity with myanmar mostly so uh, what happened we we have seen that uh, the, the same type of uh, like uh, which was uh, thought to be like in the to foster knee similar type of individuals morphological characters are having in that uh, which is organism is present in the northeastern part so we do the dna marketing study and we have um, uh, like uh, uh, this is not yet a large scale as uh, a large scale based study but we, yet we have a, a little idea that uh, that maybe it is not the uh, interstellar foster knee is may not be the endemic to indonesia or uh, the uh, Indotestudo travancorica is the introduced population of Indotestudo elongata in, pre in previous period, like uh, during the British uh, period. So this type of uh, assumption we have uh, established uh, with this uh, data. And later on, we have uh, one generated the DNA sequences of this uh, a very uh, nice looking organism that is a uh, nilsonian migricans so uh, this animal is uh, like uh, it uh, was extinct the wild, uh, wild uh, like before uh, one or two years back um, but uh, this is now we have re means elevated uh, their population and uh, uh, people are working on that and uh, the status is now critically endangered so uh, this species was believed to be uh, like restricted in a pond in bangladesh uh, in chittagong so later on we have surveyed the uh, animal in different uh, temple ponds or uh, some uh, small lakes or reservoirs in northeast india and they, actually there are uh, like uh, very much confusion confusion in morphological characters with the another congeners uh, uh, that is nilsonia hurum and uh, there are similar like of uh, if you check the in the back uh, in the carapace there are four marking is there okay the peacock like marking so uh, this uh, marking is also available in hurum uh, so, uh, but uh, people are uh, believe that this is Nilsonia hurum and uh, Nigricans is uh, already extinct in the wild. So we have to uh, means uh, generate the DNA barcode data and uh, compared with that uh, museum specimens or uh, some specimen uh, means uh, like species uh, from their type locality and we have established that uh, no the uh, steel wild population is surviving in that northeastern part 
now this is another one study this is the trading route uh, and here we can uh, we have generated some uh, like uh, dna sequences and the, the what is the theme theme is that you can see that it is the like graphical abstract so uh, if no, our northeast india is composed by three turtle we, when we uh, generate the dna data we we have seen there are six so what is the six that six are that it may be introduced by turtle trading or maybe their uh, genetic population they have established their genetic population in the northeastern region so these three species are that amida odnata chitta chitta and cyclamis fusca the people are don't know but people uh, are not considered these three species is in, from india but in uh, like uh, from uh, the southeast asia so another one study this is the on the another land tortoises and this is the pet red so we can pet and turtle so you can see the dna barcode identified these all species uh, we have collected from the pet uh, where people kept uh, for some time uh, like own belief or sometime uh, for playing for the children or sometimes they consume the meat uh, or sometimes they use their carapace or plaston from zoo therapeutic uses so for traditional medicines so <clears throat> we can generate uh, the, uh, the dna barcode sequences of these species also and uh, we have uh, like um, now this is uh, on the freshwater fishes uh, so we can uh, like establish the dna barcode data of uh, some uh, tor like mahasid fishes uh, from the northeast in india and uh, see like the n hexasticus nearly sigillus hexasticus to be true species and we have uh, like uh, um, there are one species is tor progenius but it should be the synonym of tor putitora like uh, that uh, we have uh, means uh, synonymize the tor progenius into tor putitora so there may be the changes of uh, taxonomic classification later on now again we have another one study uh, from um, from the again the mohasi group the taxonomic quest validation of two mohasi species through molecular and morphological data so now here we have also generated the dna barcode data from different type localities and we have compared so the main uh, reason is uh, like uh, we have established uh, one northeastern uh, species that tor boraki uh from northeast india and tor mosal and tor putitora from the other parts of india so this type of uh anal I mean study we are generally doing so you can see uh the this is the flow chart uh, we have adopted the sample collection number of uh, assumed species some morphological identification that molecular data partial mtcy both we can uh, generate the MTCY and MTCDB both data, then we construct the tree, and means uh, like use the multiple species dimension methods and tree molecular ID interpretation and then back to the morphological interpretation. So uh, this uh, means uh, this is called a reverse taxonomy. So uh, while um, uh, doing the DNA barcode, uh, um, not alone uh, could you uh, means produce you a good result or convincing result so you have to look back the uh, morphological uh, characters also so now uh, this is uh, we have uh, like uh, generated a large scale data of uh, thrips uh, thrips it is a small size minute uh, invertebrates insect species uh, it is a agriculture importance and horticulture importance because uh, it transmitted other uh, tospoviruses and uh, act as a pest and factor species so we have uh, collected uh, the different species uh, different uh, thieves from uh, like this different uh, geographical regions in india and we have uh, means identified uh, all that species 
through um, you know, morphological characters and preserve being uh, like in very good uh, condition by slide mounting and uh, before the slide mounting we can make one little bit cut here uh, ab in abdominal section and uh, we have just uh, like isolate uh, that uh, uh, DNA uh, from uh, like non-invasive uh, DNA extraction from that particular minute insects and uh, we then uh, generate the DNA barcode data and we analyze these things. <clears throat> so after analysis of the DNA barcode uh, data, we have uh, like uh, see that uh, different thing is there, like resolve the cryptic species and species complexes. <clears throat> like if we, if we consider that is the some uh, one species is there, it's fossilis, and there are uh, uh, different uh, like high genetic divergence is uh, presence in between uh, that same individuals or same species. Mm, uh, here also you can see that Anderson and Gadurai, these are the two different species, but they have uh, like uh, may maintain the very low uh, shallow divergence. So this type of uh, uh, like uh, thing you can uh, get while uh, doing some large scale sampling and large scale DNA barcoding analysis. But uh, uh, after that, you have to interpret the result. Why? Why it it it's it's bec um, becoming like that, uh, and uh, how how it's uh, coming? Uh, our result is showing this type of result uh, data. Um, so, uh, but uh, while you uh, interpreting your uh, morphological uh, uh, re morphological data or molecular data or biogeographic uh, knowledge so you can really um, means uh, you can see the hierarchy you can see the concordance mostly or uh, some type sometimes uh, the uh, discordance also so um, in the next things uh, resolve the cryptic species so I, I i will show you this is the same type of thing uh, various type of complex uh, species uh, diversity is there or some cryptic species diversity is there and this is the thrift spammy uh, and this is the most uh, means uh, one critically vector uh, species and you can you, you, you can show that uh, like uh, there are four uh, species vector four uh, means cryptic species may be present in uh, the uh, through uh, throughout the india so um, to uh, like uh, if we um, think to protect the, our agriculture uh, systems or horticulture system from this uh, thieves farmy paste species or vector species so um, uh, we have to uh, like um, think about that that there may be uh, in some other uh, genetic constitution is there and uh, moreover one interesting thing is um, uh, sometimes uh, maybe you have uh, heard uh, about the Ulbachia bacteria. So this Ulbachia bacteria, um, there is the endosymbiont, and uh, they uh, means uh, causes the cytoplasmic incompatibility, or sometimes uh, like uh, uh, triggered the means male female ratio. They can hamper. So the, if we uh, to mitigate or to protect these uh, agriculture systems and to if we um, try to uh, like uh, uh, means check that uh, particular thief spammy population and uh, try to reduce them. So and if if we, if we compare uh, means if you introduce that uh, uh, like Ulbachia from the um, outside. So um, you have to also check the genetic constitution first, and then we can uh, frame our work in that way. So another one, uh, large scale attempt is uh, the identification uh, of Indian spider through DNA barcoding. This is a similar type of study. We have generated 489 uh, barcode data. Uh, that is uh, around comp comprised of 101 morphospecies. 
72 genera and 21 families. So uh, this will show you also, uh, we have estimated, uh, see, this is the barcode gap. 2.6 to 3.7 in this data set. Uh, if we if we create the another data set, uh, that, that barcode gap may not be consistent in, in every time. Uh, again, if we it is not consistent in spider also. If we if we uh, like uh, see this this data is uh, comprises of uh, 489 uh, barcode data. If we uh, like incorporate another uh, thousand DNA barcode data in that, that time that uh, um, divergence times may be changed and the DNA barcode means gap also may be sometimes varied. So <clears throat> we, we, um, uh, in this uh, data set, we have uh, estimated this is our barcode data. And we have also uh, like uh, means make some prune tree, and we have check uh, the see this is the cyclosus spinifera. There we have uh, means uh, cyclosus spinifera from uh, two different uh, like uh, the same species, but it's clearly so two different clades. Here also Paradosa pusiola and um, Heteropoda venatoria. There is, you can see, there is clear two clades, two clades. So maybe there are cryptic diversity in this, and these also having the high cryptic diversity in this species. So now you can also check the species complexes, uh, like uh, two different species, but uh, or a morph, uh, different morph, color morph is there. So maybe the two different, different species, but it's uh, not uh, showing that uh, clearly discriminated by DNA barcode sequences. It may be, uh, it, 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 it may be happen that uh, if we uh, like, um, incorporate or in, in, uh, concentrated other uh, nuclear or other more uh, one or two or multiple genes so that time uh, that uh, may be resolved that uh, problem. So um, uh, again, this is the one uh, another interesting thing that is uh, crisis sequences to lymphenia. We can um, uh, make the revision of uh, taxonomic classification of that particular uh, species uh, by using this uh, DNA barcode sequences. So now uh, another one study is for bees. We have generated the sequences from uh, like Indian Himalayan region. Uh, from different groups and uh, like uh, we have um, similarly uh, means check the cryptic diversity of and or uh, species complexes over there. Uh, this is the another one interesting thing. This is the eDNA barcoding and uh, this is a very small uh, like study, but it is really interesting study. Uh, this is a one temple pond in Assam uh, and we don't know whether uh, how many species is uh, in the temple pond. So we have collected uh, some 10 or 12 or 20 uh, um, cube of water from there and uh, we have not doing uh, done that uh, like NGS technology for that but rather we have uh, used that very Mm, uh, conventional Sanger sequencing method for that. Um, for uh, mm, means we separate the separate tube. We have just uh, um, extract uh, the DNA sample um, by like uh, we can use uh, various filter size filter papers to. Um, filter the water sample and uh, by use, using that uh, biological materials we have extracted the dna and we have seen that uh, three species is there so uh, so this is the temple and this is the table pond so this is again a very interesting and uh, for uh, priority conservation of that particular uh, threatened or endangered species so now uh, the thing is that uh, DNA barcoding is the short segment uh, and there are uh, some lack is there. People are <clears throat> almost, uh, although the global uh, people are doing very rapidly, uh, India also doing very good. And uh, mm, uh, I will tell you, uh, 
uh, some group uh, uh, like uh, as per my knowledge uh, in southern part uh, dr rajiv raghavan is there uh, dr nilesh dhanukar uh, he is now in i think delhi noida and uh, dr rajiv raghavan from kufos so uh, they are really doing a very good uh, with the help of dna sequences and uh, the morphological data particularly fresh water fishes so and uh, there are other also uh, group uh, but uh, uh, as per my interest i have uh, seen that who are directly uh, working on that particular um, uh, group of study and um, in uh, southern part of india um, in jdsi also having three uh, regional center two in chennai and one is calicut so um, uh, student can also visit uh, the uh, like in jdsi geological uh, survey of india our regional center and uh, there are also several eminent scientists there uh, who are really help you uh to for uh, morphological identification or uh, means if you want to start any a new group uh, for this type of uh, biodiversity related research <clears throat> so uh, now uh, the thing is uh, that uh, beyond that dna barcode sequences uh, what else we can do uh, if we generate the a large uh, means a large scale uh, sequencing data so <clears throat> i can show you the say, simple gleams uh, like uh, this is the again the nilsonian aggregates uh, and uh, this is the punctura tentoria this is the complete mitochondrial genome structure and we can check uh, while uh, dna barcoding study we just check the okay this is the species identification and the very basics of the uh, phylogeny Means species are uh, the two different species are really <clears throat> diverged from each other or not, or they can make the reciprocal monophyly or a phyle means class chart is different or not. So these type of very basic things we can uh, means uh, uh, gain knowledge from that uh, DNA barcoding study. But if you want to uh, do some really in-depth phylogenetical analysis or some structural motifs or some structural analysis, what is uh, what actual gene rearrangement study? So you have to uh, go for that uh, whole genome, whole mitochondrial genome, or sometimes the whole genome sequences also. So uh, you can see uh, this is another one for functional acylatensis is the endangered species. So this is the uh, tRNA structure. We can check the tRNA structure and inside the tRNA structure, there are also several other uh, phenomena is there like Watson Crick base pairing, some Ubel base pairing is uh, present or not. Uh, and uh, what is the like, see, this is the uh, codon, uh, start codon, stop codon uh, of each 13. If we compare the each 13 uh, protein coding genes, so what is the uh, possibilities of uh, uh, some a particular start codon in which gene? So uh, there are several types of analysis you have to go through. If you go through a particular paper or there are several papers in web, so you can check uh, and you can really means interesting, get interesting from that. Uh, now <clears throat> for the in-depth phylogeny, see, uh, we have generated the DNA uh, complete mitogenome of a particular species and we have acquired from different uh, from databases we compared with that uh, see the crocodile birds and all the from uh, whales humans like this is the platypus and uh, we can uh, like um, uh, established a, a relationship and the mitogenomic phylogeny with amniotes corroborate the sister relationship attached to it with the archaeocidans means barred crocodilians so uh, while uh, this is the turtle and tortoise this is the reptiles birds uh, it should be close to the snakes or lizards but uh, no it's not it's uh, like it's very close to the birds and crocodiles so this is the uh, phylogenetic evolution and evolutionary lessons of turtle and tortoises as of now
uh, now this is another one interesting thing uh, that is the gene rearrangement and gene evolution evolution of genetic i mean gene boundary or gene arrangement in mitochondrial genome it may it may be like um, uh, like uh, help you to uh, check the whether uh, um, uh, replication sites uh, or multiple replication sites it's like uh, uh, the repetition of um, or duplicate control region how they uh, means uh, play a major role in mitochondrial dna evolution so there are uh, several uh, like see you can see there are inversion or inverse transpositions means uh, th sometimes what happened uh, they may shifted from positive stand to negative stand uh, they may uh, like uh, uh, a, a block of gene may be shifted from this location to this location this type of various uh, rearrangement you can uh, check uh, uh, by this mitogenomic uh, based uh, analysis so this is the similar thing uh, for new identity samayankur this is the recently we have published these things in biomedical genetics uh, and this is the complete <coughs> mitogenome mitogen fragate bud. Actually, this is the very uh, like uh, they are not uh, terrestrial, but rather than they have very deep sea uh, bud. And uh, during this arm fun uh, in last year, so they may be migrated from uh, flown by the air. Uh, from deep sea to that mainland so we have um, means collected uh, this specimen with the help of the forest development and uh, we have generated the complete mitogenome of that particular species and we have means like uh, check there are uh, like uh, a novel rearrangement of that particular species if we compared with that other <coughs> means like fragged bird with other sully formis or pelican formis species so this is also very interesting uh, to perceive the knowledge on that evolutionary biology of birds uh, this is a, a very new one uh, again the Tupea nicoburica. So this is a like tree shoe species. It is the endemic uh, to Andaman Nicobar. And uh, like uh, we have uh, generated the complete mitogenome. And this is the uh, like uh, control region structure of the control region. Uh, ETS1, there are different domain of that control region. We can compare with that all Tupaya species uh, available um, as of now okay and uh, this is the like phylogeny and time scale when they evolve if we compare with the rodents lagomorphs primates dermoptera and scandensia so when our species uh, were evolved and um, how it relate to other uh, uh, means uh, primates so the thing is that that uh, like before uh, many years like uh, that species was thought to be two different subspecies to pay nicoburica nicoburica and tupica nicoburica surda uh, based on that little and great nicobar island so i well here we study that no this is uh, a single species and no, not a different uh, to other species because they have maintained a very uh, less uh, genetic uh, distance, uh, but maybe you can uh, treat it as a different population of these two isolated islands. So th <clears throat> this is another thing uh, we can establish the, or we can uh, discover uh, the new mammal species from again the Narcondam Island. It is a very isolated island in the an archipelago and this is the uh, like volcanic island is still uh, means uh, have existed in the uh, archipelago so we have collected this uh, three we have compared the granular dental character morphological character we have generated the dna bar data and we have discovered this mammal species uh, from the narconda borkalic island so thank you. Uh, 
um if anybody having any questions please uh, share with me thank you sir for taking us into the world of dna barcoding and and for enlightening us with your informative lecture now the session is open for discussion i request the participants to voice out their questions or type the questions in the chat box good morning sir this is lud mary uh, so impressive and informative uh, i wish to know whether uh, in uh, reverse bio uh, i mean dna barcoding you said uh, getting back to the morphological taxonomy is very important but uh, the keys for that normally doesn't lead us to categorize up to a species level so how far uh, we can rely on the barcoding uh, and put them place them according to the phylogeny and also one more question what is the, the the tissue type that we might have to use for different organs since it varies but um, the reliable source um, should it be trust standardized or is there any uh, e uh, database where for particular animals so that we can give some dim key dimensions that we can help uh, go uh, closer to the animal <clears throat> okay madam i i will share you one small story uh, means after complete my phd i have visited uh, wildlife institute of india dehradun uh in to attend uh, one of the renowned uh, herpetological <coughs> uh, means uh, 15 days in intensive uh, course work uh, so there uh, were uh, professor sushil datta a eminent scientist from herpetofauna um, uh, he was present and uh, we are asking the similar type of questions like uh, whether the morphological data uh, if, if the species key is not available uh, for that particular species identification what we can do so said immediately tell us to you you make the identification keys fast and then you means you have to try to find some more morpho unique morphological character maybe maybe uh, see this is if uh, a particular literature or if a particular book are having that uh, part, uh, morphological keys uh, that morphological keys the, the scientist or that particular uh, group of scientists may be uh, missed some real key or real characteristic uh, which we have to look for the species identification or species discrimination uh, so uh, uh, available key is a good option but um, means you have to uh, if there is not you have to establish your own key uh, but i don't know whether uh, it is uh, good to generate only the dna barcode data because uh, what happened if you uh, just uh, generate the dna barcode data and you don't know the species name by uh, it is not a microorganism but, uh, you just uh, like add uh, staphylococcus 10259 this is the strain number but for a microorganism or uh, like a big uh, group a taxonomic group you have to give a binomial nomenclature so that time you have to establish the, the morphological character you have to uh, means uh, like uh, look for that or if sometimes it is a new species then you have to also uh, publish in jew bank also so uh, if the um, morphological keys are uh, not uh, really available for any particular group uh, try to uh, contact uh, the pioneer researcher on uh, that particular uh, group of species uh, discuss with them and uh, like uh, you study your own 
I use by modern uh, tools and techniques, I, 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 not in case uh, for molecular biology, I am telling you the uh, morphological, use some good type type of microscope, some electron microscope. So you can, you have to establish or you can establish your, uh, the key characteristic of that particular species. And you can enhance the key character also. Uh, maybe the previous group, they have also uh, studied that particular group, but they have missed, but you can incorporate the another one uh, very, uh, important key for that particular group. Thank Madam. you, sir. So, can uh, Dr. Deepak Kumar Divedi, sir, is telling that can DNA barcoding be used for species identification in parasite? such as tematode and nematodes, yes, definitely. But um, as my previous speaker also told you, there are, uh, that may, may, may be sometimes uh, that COI gene, it will not work for that uh, lower invertebrates. You have to uh, like go for the 16S or uh, some other genes. Uh, so you have to go for the literature uh, available uh, for that particular group. And you can check that uh, the people are uh, which gene they are using, uh, but it is really, it, it will definitely um, help you to uh, like uh, generate the DNA barcode data or uh, compare or discriminate from one species to another. Uh, could you uh, give us information for identifying moth uh, through DNA barcoding? Yeah, that moth species, it is a um, really challenging group because it is a highly diverse group uh, in India as well as in the world. So there are so many species. Uh, so, and uh, this is the cryptic diversity and color polymorphism also very high in this particular group. But again, uh, uh, if you have uh, some good connection with some researcher or uh, like uh, Jerusai is uh, a good platform, uh, like so many scientists are working in moths and uh, they have also published a very, um, several new species or a good collaboration with uh, foreign countries. So, um, um, and uh, regarding the DNA barcoding and primer, because Cox1 is uh, uh, doing really good for that. And uh, you can use the HCO, LCO primer uh, for that uh, to amplify the DNA barcoding region. So it will be good to start with moth uh, as uh, it is uh, like uh, the species diversity is high and you can easily collect the specimens uh, from the wild uh, by light trapping or some uh, you can, uh, but uh, one, another, uh, the most important thing while uh, collecting the moth uh, or uh, some other group, uh, like uh, you have to be very careful uh, during that sampling because uh, within that time you have to uh, like separate every uh, specimen shortly, short, uh, it is, uh, the sorting is very important and then pinning and over drying, drying. That is the main important thing. If you over dry the specimen, sometime you may face the difficulty while doing the DNA extraction and uh, generate the DNA barcode data. Most importantly, that is uh, like, uh, if you really integrate uh, the molecular te techniques in your study, then uh, doing very rapidly, don't wait for another five years or another two or three or four years. We are uh, facing the challenges. Uh, this is the, actually why I'm telling you now, because we are facing sometimes challenges while doing some DNA barcode uh, analysis with the museum specimens uh, like, uh, more than uh, 10 years back. Oh, which, which were collected. <clears throat> so it will be better to uh, generate the DNA data subsequently and you then you uh, preserve the your samples for a long over time. And uh, subsequently you can also uh, preserve your DNA also in minus 80 for long term use. Thank you. So the thing is, apart from COI, how many genes can be used for barcode? So the earlier speaker also already told you that um, we can use, see, uh, barcode means uh, people are, uh, know, uh, most of the people know that COI gene. 
is the barcode region but uh, like the barcode term it is a catchy word uh, like but in a while uh, means day by day and acceleration of that biodiversity research or molecular taxonomic research uh, uh, we are uh, not uh, generally um, like for a particular uh, paper title or for a particular article title the RDNA barcoding but it, it will be uh, good to uh, means changed uh, like it is a biomarker or molecular marker so CUI may be used for molecular marker cytochrome B may be used for molecular marker it is a it really two very good bio, um, molecular marker in mitochondrial gene there are several other nuclear marker also there are 28s and uh, MA is some invertebrates also uh, like 16s 12s they can uh, people are using uh, ITC RBCL Matt K, uh, ITC, uh, ITS is uh, like intergenic spacer regions is uh, special, I mean, uh, very useful for fungi. Uh, Matt K and um, RB, RBCL that uh, that can be used for plant if you um, go for uh, with any plant species. So, uh, but again, uh, people are sometimes using the NAD sequence also some uh, like uh if you if you use the fip means uh, 650 the dna barcoding region is 650 you can uh, you can uh, see this type of a good result you can achieve if you use the 1500 base pair much good result you can achieve if you concatenated the g multiple genes like 10 genes, 5 nuclear, 5 uh, like uh, mitochondrial, some D loop. So, this will give you more better result. So, whether uh, what it means, why you are uh, doing these things, like uh, you have to uh, means fast, uh, like select your biological questions, why, wh what you are going to be answer. So, based on your uh, biological questions or queries or hypothesis you have to build your data set and you have to doing some analysis thank you sir for answering all the questions patiently the link for attendance is posted in the chat box participants are requested to mandatorily fill in the attendance form Now I welcome you all to the training session one of national level virtual training on DNA barcoding.